The ideal is you can have a mirror between the two of you and you can't tell almost whether it's the other guy or you, you know, that's what you're looking for. An Olympic final, you're looking for a totally seamless, smooth unit. I mean, that's perfection and we never got there. I think I'm quite difficult to live with because I think I'm, I'm quite goal orientated and, you know, that doesn't often translate into family life. Um, you know, with children, you got, you've got to be more flexible than that. Sport gives you that structure. Sport gives you that, you know, I want to be there. I, I, I want to beat that person or I want to win that event or I want to be in the middle of that podium. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. And ultimately, because it's sport, it's great if it works out. If you win a gold medal, it all makes sense. Having gone to one Olympics and won my first one, then taking part was never going to be enough. Never. Our standard very quickly became winning. If, if you've gone to the Games and won a gold medal, then winning a silver next time is not a good result. And so going back again and again and again and winning was kind of the minimum required. And, you know, that became, that became the, the driving force behind it all. Not many people, you know, know for weeks and months and years beforehand, that's when my test is going to come. There are lots of lines of work that are way more stressful and way more important than sport. Um, and there are lots of endeavours that the human body can go through that are harder than rowing a rowing race. Um, but you won't get many where they tell you when your test is going to come. Because the level that everyone has trained to and the speed which everyone can attain, you've pretty much got to go next to flat out throughout. Um, the, the important bit is, if your flat out is here, you know, where's your pace behind it? But essentially, anything up at that 98, 99% of what you can do at sprint is going to hurt a lot. And so it, you, even though you're breathing in and out as fast as you can breathe in and out, your body just isn't able to catch up. So it, it produces lactic acid, which then hurts, and that starts at... 30 seconds into a six minute race and gets worse and worse and worse. So as you, as you go down the course, you're, you're having to deal with that growing intensity of pain um, for that full six minutes. And you know that if you ever give in to it, you'll lose because somebody else in that race won't give in to it. Um, there's the old cliche in sport about who wants it more. In a rowing race, it's how much pain can you take usually. So your brain is busy drawing lines across this rowing course so that without turning your head, you know, right, you know, this boat over here, the one closest to us is slightly ahead and we're ahead of the one over there and that one's farther behind and da da da, da. And then you'll be concentrating actu actually on the, the rowing action and how you get to the finish line as quick as you possibly can. With all that going on, there's still what you can feel through the boat, which is the rhythm of the boat. And the rhythm is generated not just by you on your own, but by the whole crew. So when everyone is strong around you and the rhythm is fantastic, you can feel the boat going well. And when it feels like that, it feels unstoppable. And then the pain is insignificant. The tactical situation, it's like, I don't, it doesn't matter. We know we're going well, you can feel it. You can feel the guys around you and you know, the boat is surging along that you're just like, this is amazing, it feels so easy. It feels relaxed and it feels loose and it feels powerful and it feels fast. That's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, that's, uh, that's addictive. And that's probably what, what keeps you going back again and again.